Hey, YouTube. Yuri Turov, the developer of Synthesizer, has released a new weird app that's fun. Like, it's got uh, three different synthesizer parts and this crazy XY controller thing. And as you see there, you can have notes that are stuck and some notes that you press. And it's got three distinct synthesizer parts that you can have either being pressed or stuck. So you can do interesting ambient textures and layers and things like that. Um, and uh, I'm gonna do kind of a bit of both with some notes that are held and some notes that are played. Uh, it's gonna be easiest to show you the notes that are held. Um, I'm gonna start off with sort of like a, a bassy drone thing. Um, start off with one little dot here and make that a square. And bring in the second oscillator, which is presently a, uh, a saw, and drop that down an octave. So it's doing that. And let's hear how that sounds with the second one. Alright, and I'm going to jump over into the uh, mod here, and uh, one thing that I learned when, when playing with the uh, ambient massive patch that I did in Audulus was I really like my drones to go up and down slowly through pitches. So I'm going to do that here by assigning, um, it's presently a sound to uh, oscillator 1 and 2 pitch on the first LFO, so I'm going to just give it a little bit of that. Just a little bit of that. And slow down the frequency here. In fact, I'm going to sync it. So now it's giving me uh, notes. So every eight notes, it's going to, or quarter, or four notes here. Or set four bars. Anyhow, it's very slow. And uh, yeah, I guess that would be four bars. It's changing this slow pitch bending thing here. And uh, let me play around with the filter a little bit here. Just pull off some of the sharper bits there. Because this is supposed to be a bassy sort of thing. Let's see if I can bump that up. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice kind of growl. Uh, I feel like it needs to be separated a little bit. Those last two are a little too close. All right, I like that. I'm gonna mute that right now um, and go work on uh, another one. And uh, this one is gonna be more stringy. Um, go back into the oscillator section here. Um, I'm going to use a couple of saws here, and I'll detune the second one slightly. Yeah, I like that. And um, you'll notice that with these um, held notes, it's just this constant sustain. Like if we go in the envelope here, um, this sustain is all that we're hearing. So if I take out the sustain, there's never a new attack phase or anything like that. It's like if I pump this decay. If there was a re-trigger of the envelope, we would be hearing this slow fall. Oh shit, I put too many dots. Uh, you, if I push this now, you'll hear it and it's gonna have this slow fall, but it's never getting re-triggered. So, um, if you do want your notes to be re-triggered while being held, you have an interesting opportunity to do that using uh, the LFOs here. So one other assignment that you got on these uh, LFOs is the amp level. Um, and um, we can give it a wave that's very similar to a an ADSR or at least the DSR part of that. Um, 
where it's going to pump up the amp level and then drop it for us. So let me give it uh, maximum amperage here. And uh, since I'm no longer using this uh, envelope at all, I'm just leaving it on full sustain. So the LFO is doing that. And we can slow down the LFO to um, give us a, a slower decay. So now it's uh, at a half bar. Nice, kind of pleasant sort of decay. Uh, I'm going to give this some reverb. And probably some delay. That time is too great. I'm gonna screw with the feedback just to hear what that sounds like. Oh shit, I switched. Use this filter to cut off some of that really high, you can hear that almost resonant sound when it's maxed. We can filter that down. It's a very plucky sort of string sound. Um, we've also got some other interesting things available to us in the mod section here, uh, where we can actually assign the Y axis to do things. So, wow, that really changes very dra dramatically. Oh, uh, I want to point out that all that's happening right now, that huge change in sound, was just changing the note, because right now the Y-axis is not assigned to anything, so that's really remarkable how much that changes. Um, there's also a way to keep it locked. Pitch lock. Alright, so now... I'm moving left and right, and it's only staying movable on the y-axis. So that's that's pretty handy for trying to assign a modulation just to that y-axis. So um, I want notes on the y-axis to be brighter. So. Um, I'm going to assign the filter cutoff here and go back into envelope where the filter is and bring this down. So now, uh, this is just kind of an example with it maxed out. It's pushing that cutoff up, but if I bring it way down, it's like really muddy. Uh, I don't actually want it to be that low. Ah, uh, so you hear they're both going off at different times, even though they're supposedly using the same LFO, but they're not because the LFO is not. Wait, I thought it was because it wasn't on trigger, but it... okay, there we go. Okay, it was on trigger, yeah. So they each had independent times. Now they're running on the same global clock, so they're playing together. Or if you like that, you can do some interesting. Kind of polyrhythmic thing, I guess. Maybe. That's great how it just instantly plays that back at exactly the same tempo that I played it in it. Like, uh, I'll go. Play around a little bit more with that cutoff. could also assign this thing that's playing with the, um, that's giving us our pseudo uh, envelope here that's doing the plucking. We could assign this also to the cutoff, so that the cutoff also gets some pluck. You can, you can just barely hear that. Listen to the, it's the squishy bits on the end here. All right, no squishy bits. It's very subtle, but it's in there. It's kind of fun. Um, 
I really like the way that that's coming together. Um, I wanted to get fancy. I could put the Y axis to also control the speed of this LFO, but I actually really like it the way it's sounding right now, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's move on to the next section here. And for this one, I'm going to make use of the um, FM that's available in here. Um, so if I bring in some FM. Right, so this is what it sounds like without FM. And giving it a little bit of FM. Where oscillator 2, which is currently silent, is sending a frequency modulation source to the uh, pitch of oscillator 1. not going to hold this one so sometimes the things just work out perfectly i really like the way that sounds i think the only thing i'm going to change on this is the octave That's fun. Okay, let's uh, uh, give this, this since this is going to be like something I actually play in. Um, I want to give it a regular ADSR envelope, so a uh, bit of attack, uh, some decay, whole bunch of release because I'm feeling ambient, and uh, reduce sustain. Give it a little bit more decay. Crank the volume of that up a little bit. It's amazing how great that sounds, and I haven't even gotten to the effects yet. We gotta give that some reverb, right? Yeah. Uh, let's think here. Is there anything else that could be done to this? Because this is already, like... a thick weird sound. I don't want to play around with it too much from this point. <laughs> kind of a theremin the up here in the higher registers. I do want that to be a little louder and I've already maxed it out so let me see if increasing this will do. Oh yeah that's, that's the trick. Or that just a bit. Oh, you know what? Uh, hmm. Can we assign the? We can. All right, we can assign the FM depth uh, f for the y-axis. So let's see what happens if I decrease this now. So it's not doing FM anymore. Just kind of a boring, well, nothing's boring with reverb, but it's just a saw. And uh, now assign that to pump up the FM a bunch based on where I am on the y-axis. So by pushing that to uh, 3 o'clock, it's like it was pushing this to about 12, I think. That's that's what it sounds like, anyhow. It's about the same sound I was getting. We're getting different kind of textures down here in the low now. Oh, 
Oh god, I'm really, really having fun with this. Uh, let me bring in the other parts and let's hear how this sounds together. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know this is kind of a short one, but I, I've enjoyed it. I hope that uh, this has been informative. It's a really simple app, so there's not a lot to get into, but it is capable of some interesting sounds. I'm really, really happy that I decided to play with that uh, Y-axis modulation. That, uh, that really gave it a lot more depth to it. Uh, thank you very much to all my Patreon patrons for making these videos possible. Take it easy, folks. So, you see if I keep it at a short chord, it barely gets into that attack phase where it's bringing in the second, uh, um, or the second and third VCOs. So listen to this, I can do this kind of quick chord where it's just the sub, uh, which is a square. And then more dramatic. I'm gonna do the same thing that I'm doing with the time where I set it at a, a level then I want it to wobble around. Um, let's start off here and we'll tweak it from there. Um, the amplitude, I want it to cycle about half of the maximum volume. And so we'll, we'll take our math expression here and set it to x divided by, divided by two plus Half of that is 0.25. So try to remember that. I, I hate doing math on these videos, but this is a really important one. Hey, to Yuri Turov. Oh fuck, I should really double check his name.